Welcome to the Juniper Threat Labs Attack Demo Series. In this demo, we will be talking about Racket MQ and examine how threat actors exploit it and deploy a Linux malware. Following that, we'll show you how Juniper customers can be protected throughout the attack chain. In May 2023, a vulnerability affecting Racket MQ servers, which allows remote code execution, was publicly disclosed. Shortly after that, in early June, Juniper Threat Labs began seeing attacks targeting this vulnerability. The attacks installed a malicious Linux binary file, dubbed as DreamBasBot, which is capable of downloading and installing other modules, including a spreader, a miner, as well as update itself. It was also observed in other news that multiple threat actors are exploiting this vulnerability. This prompted the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency to release an advisory warning regarding this vulnerability. Let's understand the attack chain. This vulnerability enables a remote, unauthenticated attacker to manipulate the Racket MQ broker configuration in order to abuse a command injection. As detailed in Juniper Threat Lab's blog, one of the threat actors leveraged this vulnerability to deploy the DreamBus bot. DreamBus is capable of updating itself as well as installing other components such as a spreader module and a Monero miner. With that, let's dive into the simulation of this attack. Let's assume that this Kali Linux is the attacker's machine. Our target victim has an IP address 192.168.206.137. We first run the Python script check.py to verify whether this server is vulnerable. After verifying that the server is vulnerable, we can now proceed with our attack. For this demo, we will be using a payload that will download DreamBus bot via curl into the target server's temp directory. We will host DreamBus bot in the same Tallinn Linux machine. After launching the attack, shortly, we saw a GET request on our Kali machine to download DreamBus bot. We can confirm the successful exploitation by going to our victim machine and listing the file. We can also check in VirusTotal that the file is indeed malicious. Let's now look and see whether or not this attack works as successfully with the Juniper SRX firewall enhanced with protection from Juniper's cloud-based advanced anti-malware solution, Juniper ATP. For the demo, Juniper Threat Labs is using the following setup. We have a VSRX pictured in the center. The VSRX is a virtual SRX firewall providing network security protection. Its purpose is to inspect network traffic and with the assistance of Juniper ATP Cloud to detect malware like DreamBus bot. In addition to the virtual firewall and cloud-based protections, we are using Juniper Security Director, which is a centralized management system. It is used to facilitate our configuring and monitoring of the VSRX firewall. And we are using Juniper's Policy Enforcer as well. Juniper's Policy Enforcer enforces security policies on endpoints and ensures they comply with corporate security standards. We also have several Windows workstations, each of which is connected to the VSRX. Finally, we have an Ubuntu server acting as the malware download server. Before we proceed with our attempt to execute the attack using Juniper Connected Security Solutions, let's first examine the various policies we've configured 
within our security director and applied to the BSRX. For this demonstration, we've set up an IPS policy to detect the exploit and a threat prevention policy to detect and block the payload. To access the IPS policy, navigate to the Configure tab and select IPS Policy. You'll see that we have an existing policy named Rocket MQ Policy Drop. This policy is configured to include the IPS signature, specifically detecting the Rocket MQ exploit, and it's set to drop any packets associated with the exploit. Moving on to the Threat Prevention Policy, select Threat Prevention under the Configure tab. You'll notice that we also have an existing policy in place. Let's further inspect the protections being enforced by the applied policy. For this demo, our policies are configured to block command and control traffic threat level 8 and above. We've also set it up to block infected hosts at threat level 8 and above. Additionally, we've configured our policy to use ATP Cloud for malware detection. And as you can see, we've elected to scan HTTP downloads and block threats at level 7 and above. This threat prevention policy implied to the Juniper VSRX firewall is a critical component of our defenses, protecting our systems against malware-related attacks. It not only detects and blocks malicious traffic, but also prevents potentially infected hosts from spreading malware across our network should one of our systems gets compromised. To show you that these policies are applied to our VSRX, navigate to Firewall Policy and select Unified Policies. Our SRX device labeled as JZL-CS-40 is configured to use both the IPS policy and the threat prevention policy we configured earlier. With that, let's now proceed on launching the attack with Juniper Connected Security in place. To start, we SSH to our attacker's machine. Our target server has an IP address 10.0.1.40. From this SSH session, we initiate the attack using a Python script and a payload to download a DreamBus bot from our malware download server at 192.168.71.51, which is also the attacker's machine. We run the script and press enter. So what happened? Juniper SRX, through its IPS, detected the attack and dropped the packet. To confirm this, we access our security director, navigate to monitor, and select events and logs, followed by IPS. There, we find an IDP attack log event. Clicking more and show event details provides information about the source IP, attack name, policy name, destination IP and port, and the action taken. Additionally, on the target server, we observe no HTTP packet, confirming the attack's failure. Next, we want to test whether our threat prevention policy can detect the malware. To do this, we reconfigure our IPS policy to log the attack but not drop the packet. We've created a new IPS policy named Rocket MQ Policy No Action. Upon inspecting this policy, you'll notice that it includes the IPS signature to detect the Rocket MQ exploit, but the action is set to No Action. To apply this new policy to our VSRX, Return to Unified Policies under Firewall Policy. Go to the Rules, select the IPS Policy, and use Rocket MQ Policy No Action. We will still use the same threat prevention policy we have configured earlier. Click OK. Save the changes and publish this updated policy to our VSRX device. With the policy adjustments made, we relaunch the attack. Wireshark captures an HTTP GET request for DreamBus bot. However, inspecting the TCP stream reveals 
that the SRX has blocked the response due to possible malware detection. The exploit successfully reached a endpoint, but the payload to download Dreambus malware was blocked. We can confirm that when we go back to our security director. And we can see that we have an IDP attack log event showing that we detected the exploit. Selecting ATP Cloud shows advanced anti-malware action log. Clicking Show Event Details provides information like the source IP, destination IP and port, policy name, action taken, and the URL. Further details about this malicious file can be found under Threat Prevention by clicking on HTTP File Download. Here, the file Dreambus bot is detected at Threat Level 8. Clicking on the hash reveals additional information, including behavioral analysis, network activity, and behavioral details. Now, we click on ATP Cloud Hosts. Note that while the attack was unsuccessful, recall that the security policy being enforced on the VSRX lacks the host network activity when threats at level 8 and above are detected. In our case, our host threat level is now categorized as 9 due to the malicious activity detected. As a result, this host is now included in the infected host feed. What this means is that this host 10.0.1.40 is now isolated and disconnected from the network temporarily. Clicking at this host provides us with more details on why it is blocked, which, in this case, the host attempted to download a malicious file. We can confirm that this host is disconnected as we cannot ping or connect via RDP as before. Once the admin is sure that the host or server is indeed free from infection, she can first select the host and then, under the Investigation Status section, she can select Resolved Fixed, which changes the status of this host to Clean. After a few moments, this host will be connected back to the network again. We can verify that once again by connecting to it via RDP and browsing the net. That completes our demo of Rocket MQ exploit. Check out more videos from the Juniper Threat Labs attack demo series by visiting juniper.net. Thanks for watching.